I'm sure there are already a lot of tutorials out there about how to install Ruby on your machine. You might be using RVM or RBENV, but this is how I do it. We're going to do it my way. So anyway, I manage my Ruby installations with both chruby and Ruby install. And I find this especially useful when I'm working on multiple projects with multiple clients and each one uses a different version of Ruby. Now I'm not going to show you how to install these tools on your machine. I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer. But you can find the installation notes on each of the project's repositories. Uh, for example, here. Alright. chruby is a shell script to help manage different Ruby installations. You type chruby in your terminal, and you can see what sorts of rubies you have installed. And you type chruby plus the version of ruby you want, and it sets that as your default ruby. But as you can see right now, I only have one version of ruby installed. chruby also has an auto.sh script that reads the directory and any parent directories for a .ruby version file. And if this file exists, it will set the current Ruby version to that version with chruby, which we'll be seeing and using momentarily. Usually what I do is I have both of these scripts enabled in my .bashrc file. So you can see it right here. Now, Ruby install is another script that allows you to install different rubies on your machine. Let's go ahead and install Ruby version 2.7.4. First, let's get a list of the latest stable rubies. And now we can install Ruby version 2.7.4. Now we can set our current Ruby to that version. Oh, I think I need to restart the pane. All right, we've opened a new terminal window and let's go ahead and see our list of rubies. Awesome. And now we can set our current Ruby to 2.7.4. Let's just check our version. As you can see, our current Ruby is now 2.7.4, and we can set it back. And now it's back to 2.7.3. We can also set our default Ruby version via our home directory. Right now it's at uh, 2.7.3, so let's just change it to the new version. And now let's check our Ruby version. Now it's at 2.7.4. We can also set it to the current directory's .ruby version file. And let's go ahead and set that to 2.7.3. And now it's 2.7.3. So now we have Ruby installed and managed via chruby. But what about our gems? How do we handle that? Well, if you've watched some of my earlier tutorials, you've noticed that I installed gems with an install gems shell script. Let's take a closer look at that script. Let's open registration component and the install gems shell script. Now the line that we're interested in is right here. Bundle install dash dash standalone dash dash path equals gems. Now this will install the gems at the gems directory, i.e. locally to the project. And the standalone option will obviate the need for Ruby gems or bundler at runtime by generating a gems slash bundler slash setup file. Now let's go to that file.
What this does is add each gem location to the load path so that these gems can be loaded more easily with the required keyword. You can see this with our load path RB file. This file will load the standalone bundle file that we generated. Otherwise, it will load the gems via bundler. Notice that it calls bundler.setup. This means you'll still need to load each dependency with the required keyword. But what about RVM gem sets? I don't really use RVM in my own Ruby workflow, mostly because working with RVM is a bit of a faff. But I also don't like that the gems are installed to some obscure hidden directory. Much better, in my opinion, to install them in the project directory as close to the code as possible. Also, I like to keep the amount of DSL or domain-specific language I have to know and learn down to a minimum. I'd rather know a more universal interface or API than a more specific one, unless it's absolutely necessary. And that's it. We installed the new Ruby onto our machine, and we managed which Ruby we're using with chruby. It's a pretty powerful tool, and coupled with Bundle standalone, we have everything we need to manage our local Ruby environments. Well, that's all, folks. If you have questions for me, be sure to check out my website, josephcho.com, or you can message me on the social networks, Twitter, GitHub, so on and so forth. Thank you.